If you have been in magic for even just a few months, chances are you've heard of the legend of Richard Sanders. Now, Richard Sanders, he's uh, super creative. He's released some of the best-selling uh, products and tricks in all of magic for years now. And his sleight of hand is amazing. He's an hilarious guy. And now I have to come clean and tell you, he's also my best friend. Oh, yeah. I mean, next to the wife, of course, Richard Sanders is my best friend. He and I have been creating magic and doing magic for many, many years. And a bunch of you have been emailing both of us for the last couple of weeks asking if the rumors are true. And they are true. Richard and I are launching this week, When Creators Collide Live. Now, When Creators Collide is an underground classic book that we released 25 years ago. Since then, a number of the tricks have rolled out and influenced a whole bunch of uh, creators and, and mentalists and card magicians and all that stuff. We're going to launch it this week, and it's a very special treat. I'm going to perform for you right now and reveal the secrets uh, to the Switch Places Aces one of the many cool tricks on this underground product that's finally going to be available as a crazy video experience. Uh, Richard and I hung out for a couple of days alone in a hotel room. We went nuts. Uh, we videotaped new handlings on this stuff, and uh, there's interview clips. It's a whole wild ride on there. More information about that soon, but let's, let's jump into the Switch Places Aces. You start by having two cards selected from the pack, okay? And they are fair and fair selections, free choices, the whole bit. What do we got? One is seven of clubs, okay? And that's, of course, a put back somewhere in the middle of the pack. Seven of clubs go back in. Next one, just so you guys can watch at home, nine of hearts again going back into the middle of the deck. So both are somehow sort of selected and put back in the middle of the deck. You can give the cards a bit of a mix-up like this. You say, okay, I'm going to try somewhere in here, your cards, I'm going to try to cut to not one, but both selections right like this. There. Just like that. I think I've cut to the first card. With any luck, I'm hoping it's the Ace of Hearts. And they go, no. Now, you're, you don't know the identity of the cards. So you act surprised. Ace, it, that wasn't one of the cards. They go, no. You go, okay, how about this one here? The second card, I'm hoping they're the Ace of Spades. They go, no. And you go, well, don't worry, folks. Don't panic. This is uh, it's the way it's supposed to be. These are actually the Switch Places Aces. They made a rare cameo in my card trick. Switch Places Aces, everybody. Are you impressed? And they're not. You say, I'll prove it to you. Watch. I'll prove to you that they're Switch Places. Take the Ace of Hearts. We're going to leave it about halfway down the pack. Approximately, it's a couple inches down like that, okay? Going to take the next card, in this case, of course, the Ace of Spades, and have it change places with the Ace of Hearts. Watch. Oh. Now I've got the Ace of Hearts here. But if here's the Ace of Hearts, then, of course, over here must be the Ace of Spades. The two cards have impossibly changed places. The switch places Aces. Now you say... You might think that was a fluke, but I'm actually going to do it again. Okay, we'll do it again. We'll take the Ace of Hearts. I'm going to hold it over here. We'll put the Ace of Spades a little sticking out like this. Watch the two cards just to shake like this. You'll see that I'm hoping, boom, they change places. Because now if there's the Ace of Spades there, of course, over here must be the Ace of Hearts. They change places again. You say, look, let's get serious. Rule of three. We'll try it one more time, okay? We'll do it real slowly. Look. Ace of spades. I'm going to do this very, very slowly. Ace of spades. Nothing suspicious. Next card. Ace of hearts. Nothing suspicious. I'm going to take both cards actually and put them in the card case here. Just like this. Snap my fingers. And look. Now, with any luck, the two cards have changed places again. But this time, they've changed places, of course, with the two selected cards. This week, I'm going to be giving away or giving you a chance to win one of 12 of my astral projection tricks. An astral projection uh, is a trick uh, that actually David Blaine performed on a TV show, uh, which was super exciting for me, many years ago. Uh, but I have a brand new handling I came up with about two years ago that uses a balloon and takes it next level. Okay, just a heads up on that. I want to give away 12 of them. For your chance to enter the contest and have a chance to win one of 12 astral projection, uh, let's just go with this. Since we're talking about switch places aces on this video, if you had supernatural powers, okay, and you could make any two things in the world change places, what would you do? It could be a gerbil and a Brinks truck full of cash. It could be a pair of glasses and, um, I don't know, a helicopter filled with gold. <laughs> I don't know. Any two things. Could, they could be microscopic. They could be two people. They could be this and that. So any two things in the world, if you had supernatural powers, what two things would you have changed places? Leave a comment down below. Be automatically entered into the contest. All right. Let's jump in here. Here it is. The Switch 
places aces. So let's assume you're starting with a you start she shwa with a shuffle deck. Shuffle deck of cards. There we go. Shuffle deck. Okay. How do you do this? Well, the first thing you're gonna do is gonna say, I'm gonna show you something with two playing cards. Two playing cards. And actually, forget about it. I'm not gonna choose them. You should choose the two cards, okay? So that's the first step. I've set up in front of people a red ace and a black ace on the bottom of the deck. That's what you need. They need to be there. So you can either do this as your first trick with the two cards on the bottom, or do what I just did, which is to go through, say, I'm going to show you something with two cards. Take the red and black ace, you put them on the bottom, and then you go, wait, no, 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 wait, it's, it's better if you choose them. And then you do a false cut. Now I'm using a double undercut where you kick, kick, okay? You put the two together and you keep a break. Then I cut this one here, okay, from the bottom, and the bottom half again, all right? Because I already have my two aces on bottom, I just put them there, and this cut, again, kick, cut, keep a break with your thumb, half, or uh, sort of half the packet, uh, the bottom half packet, then the other half. In performance, the cut looks like this, okay? So let's just, boom. Looks like you're just giving the cards a cut, but you've kept your two aces on bottom. So that's the first step. Next, you have two cards selected. Now, you need to have, it can be any two cards, okay, selected, but you need to control them to the bottom of the deck when they go back in. There are many ways to do this, whether you're a beginner magician or an advanced magician, this kind of thing. I'm going to just show you uh, culling. Now, culling takes practice. There's no question. I'm not great at culling, as you might have noticed on the video. I'm not a great culler. I'm pretty good in live performance. It flows fine. So two cards are selected. And... Culling is this, there's the five of hearts, and you want to look like, okay, you want to make it look like you kind of square the cards up and the card uh, remains somewhere in the middle, but you actually sneak it to the bottom, all right? And what I'm doing is this. I've got the card here, okay, king of spades, and I'm going to, to give myself cover with my left thumb, I'm going to pull this card to the left, covering the selection. There's the selection. I'm going to pull this card over, while well, my right fingers slip the card first to the right and then to the bottom. That's culling. Now, it's not the technique you'd, you'd often use sitting down because it can flash along the bottom, okay? And what I mean by that, here's the second selection going in, is this action of slipping a card to, the, uh, to my right and then underneath, of course, right now you can see it go. And if I'm not careful, the key to this is to put your hands way down towards the floor. Because if you're not careful, people will see this little action, okay? And you don't want them to see that going to the bottom, right? So if you tip it right down, it tends to cover everything nicely. So, first I got an ace, a black ace, and a red ace to the bottom. Then I had two cards selected. Then both cards are controlled to the bottom. So I've got a four-card setup right now. The two selections on bottom, and then on top of those, the two aces. Next, I'm going to say, look, I'm going to try to cut to one of the two cards. And as I spread these cards out, I spread them a little further out so that I can look at the bottom cards. There they are, the bottom cards. Because I'm going to get a break above the one, two, three, four, five. So my four card setup plus one extra, what's called an indifferent card or an X card. I spread them out. Then when I square these up, I keep a break. I'm keeping a break with my pinky. Now, switch places aces is an advanced card trick for sure. Uh, even even though these moves are not super tough, they're kind of intermediate, and it'll take practice to get them smooth, of course. So I've spread them out. I've looked at them. Said, well, I'm, I'm going to try to cut to one of your cards somewhere in the pack here. And just like that, I got my break. Right? Then I'm going to double undercut again. This time I'm going to, uh, you can kick cut, or what you can do, yeah, let's just, I'm going to kick these off. I've got my break already held there. Then I'm going to kick these up to the top like this. And what that does, it brings my five card set up to the top, and I'm ready to go into the trick from a shuffled deck, right? I've got an indifferent card. I've got my two aces, and then I've got my two selections. This is where I am. Now, I come over, and I do a double lift. Okay, I'm going to turn over the top two cards. Now, sometimes in performance, I just take off a top card, flick it, and put it back. And that gives me a chance to get a break under the top card, the new top card. And it means that I can turn over the two cards really smoothly, really easily. Other times, I'll just do a strike double. And what that is, I'm going to come over, and with my finger, I kind of quickly count two cards and turn them over as one. Either way, it's a double lift. And I go, hey, ace of spades, your card, your card. And they go, no. And I go, this wasn't either of your cards. I act surprised. They go, no. 
I go, well, let me check this next card here. And what have I done? I've taken the top two cards off and I'm using my, uh, this is key, my middle finger, this one here, I'm using that one to make sure I cover the, um, the front edge because I'm taking a double. If I hold them like this, someone might see the two edges, right? But if I take them off like this, I go boom, I go, uh, so that wasn't it. Well, how about this one? And use the index finger or the egg, add the race to turn this over. How about that one? Is that someone's? No. So I'm getting set up, but I'm acting like that's weird. Nine of these aces, I go, well, actually, you know, I'm just pretending. I'm not surprised. Ladies and gentlemen, they're the switch places aces. And I say this as if I'm making an excuse for a screw up. Okay. Uh, they're the switch places aces. They're supposed to be here. And no one believes me. And I go, well, now, well, I guess I'm going to have to show you what I mean. So it gives you the motivation to demonstrate. Okay. Turning over the ace of hearts. Turning over the double. Okay. Like this. And apparently putting the ace of spades in the middle, but it's my indifferent card. It's my X card sticking out. Okay. Then I come back over and I'm going to do another double lift to show the ace of hearts. Got to be careful because when you're doing this double, you don't want to flash that. Got to keep the hand down, turning this over. Now, they saw the ace of spades here. They just saw the ace of hearts. So when you go and show now there's the ace of spades, that is a very pretty moment of card magic. Okay. Very pretty. But if that's the ace, is that really the ace of hearts? And so you're going to come over, pull that out, and show them very fair that, of course, it was the ace of hearts. That looks so good. This is a variation on Frank Garcia's original topper move. Uh, and Richard and I were playing around with this many, many, many years ago. Okay, And what's happening here, and I, I've talked about this on my YouTube channel here once or twice before, is I'm pushing this one in as the hand's turning, and with my thumb off the top, this comes out. A nice snapping sound as the illusion, okay? So, boom, that comes out. And then I immediately, even though you don't have to, you'll see. I immediately, having pulled this off, I slip this face up into the middle of the deck and kind of strike a beat. And this sells the idea that they just change places under test conditions. So it's kind of a framing device that sort of sells what the effect happened and really makes it very convincing. So you pause a beat there. Then the idea, well, I'll do it again. Okay. And so here, maybe you've got a table. It's great if you have a table here. You turn over the ace of hearts here. Take the ace of spades. Hold it off to one side and push the ace of hearts forward a little bit like this. Basically recreating the framing, the look that you had a moment ago where the one ace was here and the other ace was here. But you are so far ahead. Now you experienced card magicians know exactly what I'm getting ready for. I actually have the ace of hearts and spades here, and this is uh, one of the selected cards, okay? And what am I doing? So, we had it here. We were here. Now, let's assume I put that down, or if I don't even put that down, I can just take the ace of hearts. Either way, the ace of hearts gets turned over and put on top of the pack. I take the ace of spades and very briefly put it on top, say I'll do it again and take it off. But I'm actually holding by the corners the, uh, what are called uh, back-to-back. Okay, Ace of Spades and Ace of Hearts. I'm getting ready for a move, and the official title is In Lieu of Vernon's Push Through the Fist Move. It's a move by a guy named Marlowe. He created it, and it's a long title. I sometimes call it the spin or the twirl or whatever, but you're here. Then with the tip of the middle finger, you push this top card forward as if that's still the Ace of Hearts. Okay, now I'm here. Now, I'm going to wave both hands over each other. This larger action is going to hide a smaller action. The smaller action is with the tip of my first finger, I'm gonna reach over and turn this card over. Now, you are gonna, but at the same time, the tip of my ring finger is gonna push down. It's gonna push down, okay? You combine the two together and you get a really beautiful change of a card with a big shake. You combine that with this and it looks like, so it's, they think ace of spades is here. So, and then I cross the arms, Almost suggesting I did some crazy kind of sleight of hand like that. Boom, okay? Cross the arms, and you, you don't do anything to this. You leave it out, jog, and there's the change. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can make this switch. But I've been messing around with it uh, as Richard and I, about a year, year and a half ago, started working on When Creators Collide Live, the new project. And I find the easiest thing to do is to take this double, put it basically, as you're putting it down, this tip of this finger is going to push this flush. You combine the action, and what you can get is this thing about turning that over. Really flows nicely, okay? So you're here. This is here. 
as you come down, you kind of push this in. You could even push it in with this finger. And you're kind of grabbing and turning the ace over. This large action really sells it. There's the next change. Very pretty. Now, in our original book, you then went into two triple lifts. Crazy. Under performance conditions, you're sweating. You're at the bar. You've had your usual 19 drinks. Nobody wants to do triples. T-shirt. Okay. So, I just use Atlas which is any time face-up switch, I think it is. And so you take the ace of hearts and ace of spades, okay? Say so we'll do one last time. You spread them out casually. And I'm spreading all top four cards and getting a break under the top two face-down cards, really, okay? Going to lift up, square them up, lift up all four. I've got the two selections, the two ace. Going to pull the ace of spades off to the side and use my thumb to flip it around and take it to the bottom of the packet and show it. I'm keeping a small break between that first ace and the rest. Then I'm going to take the next ace, do the exact same action, flip it around, okay, and show it. Now notice, while this is a little stiff, it's very fair looking. You clearly, it's got a nice, deliberate feel for the last moment, okay? They've seen the aces change places twice. Now the magician's saying he's going to have the aces change places one more time. They assume you mean with the, each other. But this time you can have them change places with the selection, okay? So from this position, I'm going to come over and push them against the thumb as if to square them and lift them off. But what I've done under that natural action is dropped off the two aces, okay? I've got just the selection. So I can either put these on the table, take this, flip it into the card case, ace of spades, ace of hearts, hold on to these. Crazy. I can put this away in my pocket. Boom, they change one more time. Now the ace of spades is on top and the ace of hearts is on bottom or whatever. Or they reach inside and find their selections. Or you don't even have to use the case. After you've squared these off, you can go put this in your pocket here, hand these to someone, hold on to them, and say, let's say, how they change one more time. Actually, I totally forgot about your selections, right? You remember your selections? Well, let's have the aces change places with your selections. Boom. Turn over, and there, in fact, are the selections. Okay, now, I haven't forgotten. I'm going to announce the winners right now, real quickly here, okay? Of last week's nailed winners, okay? And then we're going to get back uh, to the final part of Switch Places Aces, which you're going to love. A couple of really cool moves in there. Here are the winners of last week's nailed contest. As always, my friends, if I say your name right now, one of the 12 winners, send an email to my team at contact at sankeymagic.com and say, yo, what's up? Uh, here's my real name. Here's my YouTube name. Here's my shipping address. I won nailed I won nailed. Send me the gimmicks. I want to get going on that cool trip. Here are the winners. Dave Walnick, you won, man. David Grass, Grass, that's right. You won, not that you'll remember, moments after I say your name, David Grass. Stripper, Striper, sorry, Striper Sniper. I don't even know. Striper Sniper. Very serial killer on that. I don't think nail's going to help you, buddy. Alan Dor with two L's and two R's. Okay. Jody Boes, Boes, B-O-E-H-S, you won. Jason Sword, you won. Uh, Mickey Greenberg, Michael McDonnell, uh, M-A-C-D-O-N-E-L-L, Michael McDonnell. Ted Evans, Fajir, or is it Fahir? Fahir K, just the letter K, you won. Zaid Abu Kenan, or Ken Kenan, Zaid Abu Kenan. And finally, Antonio Moncada. Antonio, Antonio, what is that? Antonio, I know. Antonio Macana, you won too. You guys all won. Congratulations. Back to this. There you have it. The switch places aces. It may seem to be a lot of work at first, but you got to practice it, get it flowing. You know, again, until you don't have to think about the slights. Until you're at that point, you can't really present it or make it entertaining for people. You'll be too distracted. So practice, practice, practice is key there. And do not forget to leave a qu leave a, your comment down below. I want you to have a chance to win astral projection. So make sure you answer this question. If you could, if you have supernatural powers and you could make any two things change places, ah, la, 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 la. you can make them change places in the entire universe and you want to freak people out or just for personal pleasure and profit, um, which two things would you have change places? Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, and yeah, have a great day. Subscribe to the channel and call your mom or your dad. If you live with them, you go, go give them a hug or a kiss. If you don't live with them, call them today.